A recent High Court decision has far-reaching consequences for firms subject to action from the Financial Ombudsman Service. For a look at what they are, I'm joined by Jane Walsh. She's Senior Regulatory Intelligence Expert for Thomson Reuters Governance, Risk and Compliance. Jane, thanks for being with us. Um, what's the background to this case? This is quite curious. Um, a couple essentially invested money lost money and now, now claim uh, they were suing for bad investment advice. Yeah, that's right. Um, Barry and Julie Clark decided to take action against um, a firm, Focus Asset Management, that had given them bad advice, uh, which led to them losing in the region of half a million pounds. Mm -hmm. So uh, quite rightly, they decided to sue for compensation. They chose the Financial Ombudsman Scheme um, as their preferred forum initially. Uh, went to the Financial Ombudsman Scheme. The scheme agreed that they had received bad advice and that the firm was in the wrong and ordered the firm to pay them the maximum at the time. Which was £100,000. Which was £100,000. And they wanted yes. more compensation. Yes. Uh, interestingly, the, the FOS, as they are able to do, said to the firm, we think that this couple are entitled to more. They're entitled to X number of thousand pounds. You can pay that to them um, if you want to. We recommend that you do. But critically, the FOS doesn't have the power to order a firm to pay anything above the statutory maximum. The current maximum is 150k. At the time, it was 100,000. So the claimants, um, the clerks, were unhappy about this. They um, and they decided that they wanted to go to the county court and sue for the additional money. But now, if, if, if the maximum was 100 or now 150,000, yeah. then uh, surely there, um, you know, it's, it's a lost cause for them to try and get more, isn't it? Well. Uh, Hitherto, you would think that had been the case because the FOS adjudicated on the facts and usually, and as was said by the court in a, in a famous case of Andrews and SBJ Benefits Consultants a while ago, usually if you've litigated one cause of action, you cannot then relitigate in a different forum using the same facts. So yes, if you'd accepted the FOS determination, which they did, they accepted the 100 grand banked the cheque, Usually you would have thought that would prevent you from then suing again on mm -hmm. the same facts in a different forum. But actually what the High Court said, because obviously the FOS objected to, uh, not the FOS, the, the, the firm objected to this couple being able to pursue action further in the County Court. But the High Court said, no, you can go to the County Court and sue for more money, even if you have accepted the FOS determination, which is interesting. And it's, it's a new direction um, f for the false, really, it's a change in the law. Well, well, we'll get to the implications, the broader implications of this in a second. But I mean, what about I mean, people watching this might think, what about the small print that says your investments may go down as well as up? I mean, surely the firm must have had something like that in the contract. I mean, yes, well, you would isn't, hope isn't that the case? so. Yeah, you, you would hope so, but clearly they didn't do what they should have done. Um, they didn't abide correctly by the regulatory obligations and they advised in such a way uh, that the false found that they, they behaved negligently and that they were due to pay this couple the money back. Um, yes, of course, investments go down as well as up. And usually, if an individual is made fully aware of that and the firm, um, the, the firm takes their money and then loses their money, if they haven't behaved negligently, then that's just tough luck. That's what happens when you invest in the markets. But in this case, it was found. Right, because um, you know, obviously, in the last few years, uh, since 2007, 2008, a lot of people have lost a lot of money. Yes. Uh, and a lot of investments went bad. Um, yeah. Can we expect you know, a, a wave of uh, cases here, suits, l lawsuits? Well, the, the Financial Ombudsman um, Service is very, very busy all the time. People who've lost money, their first instinct is uh, quite often is to try and sue the person who took their money off them and gave them advice that, yes, they, they were making a, a good investment. But people only have a, a, a cause of action where there has been some um, negligence, uh, poor behaviour on the part of the advisor. If the advisor has correctly advised the client as to risk uh, the risks that they're taking on by engaging in a particular investment, then there's not really anything that the FOS can do with that. That's just the luck of the draw if you what, lose money. And what are the implications for financial firms then, for uh, funds um, that offer these financial services? I mean, is it just a case of inserting into the contract your investment may, may go down as well as up? No, it's not that simple. You have to give much more specific targeted advice to the person you're taking um, the, the, you're going to invest on behalf of. Uh, there's a very important regulatory requirement um, of suitability, which means that you have to make sure that the advice that you're giving to a client and the investment decisions you're making on their behalf are suitable for them. And in order to, to decide whether they're suitable for that individual, you have to know all about them. You have to know
know their appetite for risk, you have to know what their investment aims are, mm -hmm. you have to know what their level of education is in relation to those particular investments and not invest not advise very complex investments that they don't understand. You have to know obviously what the financial situation is. So it's it very uh, quite specific onerous requirements um, on advice that's given particularly to retail clients, to private clients, uh, you know, uh, as the case as should be the case. Mm -hmm. So will this case uh, have an impact on how firms handle the, the wave of PPI claims that we're seeing here in the UK? Well, it might do because prior to this case, firms could reasonably expect the Financial Ombudsman Service to be the final arbiter of any dispute that they would have um, with a client. But since this case, um, it, clients can perhaps take the money they're awarded by the FOS and sue the firm again, as I said, based on the same facts in the county court to try and get more money. Now, um, this arguably um, could lead to firms not being keen to try and settle cases at the FOS because what's the point in them trying to help the FOS and act on um, in a way that's honourable towards their clients if they're just going to be taken to the county court anyway. So they've got no incentive um, to really help the FOS and perhaps to settle cases early because the case isn't settled in the truest sense of the word because the client can then go to the county court as well. So the, there are far-reaching implications uh, of this decision. So it might make it more complex and drag it out yes. even further, which exactly. is the opposite That's effect exactly of right. uh, what is intended. Surely. Yes, and on the FSA website it says that the FOS is intended to provide an alternative to the courts. Now there is some debate as to whether or not the FOS should be an absolute alternative in that going to the FOS precludes you then from going to court. Um, but it's certainly clear that the legislative intention behind the creation of the FOS is for a quick easy, um, cheap tribunal to decide these lower value financial services claims and indeed that's arguably why the payment limit the FOS has is 150,000 so if you want to claim more than 150 grand arguably you shouldn't even be bothering the FOS you should go straight to court because that's going to be a lot more a, a much more complex case that requires hearing um, by a judge in a you know in a court environment but what's happening now is as a result of this case what could happen is people will go to the FOS to get money from the FOS in order to fund further litigation which in my own opinion goes against the in intentions of the of the scheme when it was set up. Okay Jane thanks very much I'm sure we'll be hearing much more about this and other cases like them. Thank you very much that was uh, Jane Walsh of Thomson Reuters GRC and for more information on this topic see governance risk and compliance solutions at accelus.com. I'm Jamie McGeever this is Reuters.